you're stuck inside with way too much time. You like cooking food. Carrie's your dude. He's a little extra spicy. He's a little extra ordinary. Now you're cooking with Carrie. Hi everybody, welcome back to Cooking with Carrie. Today we're gonna do Hong Kong style Chilean sea bass. Now the Hong Kong style comes from, uh, I kind of ripped it off from uh, the Atlanta fish market. When you go to the Atlanta fish market, you can order all different kinds of fish and you can have it prepared several different ways. One of the ways is grilled or blackened. Uh, you can even do piccata style. But one of the other ways that they offer it is a Hong Kong style. And the way that is, is it's uh, whatever fish you want served with a real tangy Asian style, but very light soy, uh, tangy because there's sherry in it, and it's sitting on a bed of wilted spinach. That's what we're gonna do right now. The way I'm choosing to do fish today is through a sous vide. A sous vide is a method where you use a hot bath of water and your food is in a contained, airtight environment like a Ziploc bag or a food saver bag where you can suck all the air out of it and then you put it into the water and you let the water's temperature heat the food up to the temperature that you want. This is the device. This is the sous vide and what this does is, is it's got a reader right here uh, where you can set the temperature. Once I plug this in it'll be more obvious and then this part down here is a circulator. It's a heater and a circulator with a thermometer in it, and it will get your water up to the temperature that you need it to be for whatever you're cooking. And you can set it to whatever temperature you want. Just gonna plug it in, turning itself on. So you wanna latch this onto the side so that it's secure. And then we're gonna set this to 134 degrees. Why 134 degrees? I'll tell you why, because I Googled it. Now the thing about the sous vide, what's so wonderful about it when you're doing steaks is that you can leave a steak at the temperature that you want it at. Let's say you want it at 130 degrees, which for me is perfect steak temperature. Um, you can leave it there for up to four hours before it will start to deteriorate the meat. It'll only take about an hour, hour and a half to cook, but it gives you the opportunity to prepare the rest of your meal. And when you go to nice restaurants, oftentimes the reason your steak is cooked so properly is because they've had it in a bath like this waiting for you to order it. They take it out, they sear it, they serve it, and you enjoy it. All right, we have these gorgeous Chilean sea bass fillets. Uh, the thing I like about Chilean sea bass is when it's cooked properly, it is just melt in your mouth, buttery. It's not overly fishy and it is excellent in this particular dish because it goes great with the Hong Kong style sauce. Uh, so all we really need to do is season these up a little bit with a little bit of salt and pepper. I'm gonna do a little garlic and a little bit of olive oil. So just a little touch of salt, a little cracked pepper, garlic. I gotta tell you guys, one of my favorite things about the Beaufort Highway Farmer's Market is that you can go and buy all this peeled garlic for $5.30. Used to be cheaper, but uh, I think they wised up to it. And I don't know how they make it uh, peeled like this. I like to hope that someone is not back there peeling it and it's a machine that does it, but I really don't know. I really don't care because I hate peeling garlic. But peeling garlic isn't even comparable to mincing garlic. Mincing garlic is not fun. So I've got this trusty little machine. This We call it the choppy chop. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put the garlic in here I'm gonna put the lid on this and check this out. With one, two, three, four, five, six, seven pools, check that out, minced garlic. Now I'm gonna go just a little bit more. So eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15 pools, and I've got minced garlic. How about that? Isn't that great? So we're just gonna put that aside. We're gonna take our bag. We're gonna carefully place the Chilean sea bass in there. I'm gonna take a little handful of garlic. I'm just gonna to toss it in, kind of brush it around a little bit. And then a little bit of olive oil. This is extra virgin olive oil. I'm gonna to wait to seal this, I'll, show, I'll tell you why. There we have it. So I'm gonna put these into the sous vide and I'm gonna show you how to do that. 
So our water bath is at exactly 134 degrees, right where we want it. We're gonna take our Chilean sea bass and we're gonna, we're gonna zip this Ziploc bag up about until it reaches about an inch from being completely closed. Because if you remember, I said, we want this to be airtight. We're just gonna force the air out of the bag by pushing this Chilean sea bass into the bath and allowing the water to push the air up in the bag so that it comes completely out and then we're gonna zip it the last little bit. And you'll see there that while a lot of the air is gone, it's not 100% gone. And so I'm gonna do it again. I'm only using these tongs to push this down because um, it gives me a little bit more leverage on how fast I can push the fish in and depending how fast you do it forces the air out faster and I found that that works better so I'm gonna push this down push it down push it down and let's see how good I did there there we go that's not so bad right all right so we're gonna keep that out while we do our other one because it's not a giant vessel there's so many different vessels that you can use to do a sous vide and uh, I look forward to exploring a bunch of them because um, I think sous vide is getting a lot more popular. You can buy one of these units for about $125 and um, they're like Bluetooth enabled and Wi-Fi enabled and um, really gives you complete control over cooking your food. Boom. There we go. What we don't want to happen is that the bags fall into the water because if that happens and perhaps it's not tight, airtight, the water can get in there and actually that's happened to me before and it was a bit of a disaster. Um, so I've learned to take these clips, these clips right here and you just clip the bags on the side. You want to make sure that you are not blocking where the circulation vent is down at the bottom of the sous vide. Now all we do is let this sit for 30 minutes because that's how long it's going to take this fish to cook. You now sometimes they say that some of the best food has the fewest ingredients. Well this sauce is kind of like that. This is a Hong Kong style sauce that contains soy sauce, black pepper, granulated sugar, sherry, and water. Full stop. That's it. That's the sauce. So all we're gonna do is we're gonna mix these together and put it on the stove. We're gonna do a half a cup of soy sauce, quarter cup of water, do a couple tablespoons of granulated sugar, and we're gonna do about three ounces of sherry. I'm just gonna whisk this stuff together. We wanna make sure that the sugar uh, dissolves but we don't have to worry too much about it because we're going to put it on the cooktop and the heat will dissolve the sugar. Mmm, yummy. I'm just going to transfer this to a pot and then put this on the cooktop on low. We don't want this to boil. We don't really even want it to reduce. We just want to keep it warm. That's all we're trying to do. So our fish is heating in the sous vide. We've got our sauce heating on the stove. What's missing? We're gonna wilt some baby spinach. And as you know, spinach shrinks up. So this bag will shrink up to be about two portions. We've got our pan on medium heat, sesame oil. You wanna be careful with sesame oil. If you use too much, it will be way too powerful in your food. So just a touch will do. Pinch of salt. And remember, you don't want to use too much salt on all the other things that are going to go into the dish. In this, in this case, it's only spinach and we're going to have some rice on the side, but um, the sauce is plenty salt, salty and we're going to have that sauce all the way around. And they're done. We're going to use two different garnishes for this. At the end, we're going to top it with a little bit of green onion you want to cut them on the bias, which means that they kind of have a little bit of an angle to them. And we're going to cut up a little bit of ginger too. We're going to julienne this. If you're not familiar with peeling ginger, it is super simple. You just need the right tool. And that tool is a spoon. 
take the top of the spoon and you just lightly run it down where the skin is that you want to remove and it comes right off. Dead easy. Obviously ginger is incredibly potent so what we want to try and do is make these as small sticks as we can. You ever eat those little potato sticks when you were a kid? That's what we want to try to get out of these. And I want to do it by cutting first into the lengthwise. Now we're left with big chunks like this. That's not going to cut it. Huh, get it? Cut it? We want to then slice those up so they're super thin and cut them in half like that. So we're looking for pieces that are about like that. So there's our garnish. Now the best part, we plate. Spinach, sea bass, our Hong Kong style sauce, ginger, and green onion. Put some rice on the side, let it sop up some of that delicious sauce that we have, mix it into the bowl, do whatever you do with rice. Enjoy your meal. All right, let me see your food is ready. Now you're cooking with Gary.